Hi, I'm Tommy Thomas. I want to welcome you back to this show, How to Beat the Odds. I'm excited about my guest today, Gilbert Vincent. I've known Gilbert several years now, and every time he came over, he's in the roofing business. In fact, he put a roof on our home. But he got to talking about Israel and Jesus, Yeshua and Jerusalem and the Old Testament and the covenant. And I mean, he just went on and on about things a lot of them I'd never heard of very deep in the word and has a tremendous knowledge of Israel and the old covenant and what it means today. So we're going to let him share some of his testimony. And in the second half of the show, we're going to talk about Israel and, and learn some things that most of us haven't learned before. So let's meet him right now. Gilbert, Praise welcome Lord, to the man. show. It's great to be here. You know, it says in the last days, then they that feared Yahweh spake often one to another. Yes. And Yahweh hearkened and heard it. Now, you know, you he hears all things. But he hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that one feared Yahweh and thought on his name, and they shall be mine, saith Yahweh. I want to be his, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I want to be in the book. Yeah. You know, now, I want to be in the book of remembrance. I want, don't want him to say, I never knew you. So, oh, no, I see you here in the book. I remember you because yeah. you feared me and talked often one to another. Uh, well done, good and faithful servant. Sounds pretty good, Amen. doesn't Come it? Come on in. <laughs> Enter into the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And it in His presence is fullness of joy. Amen. So that's where we got to be. Got to be right with Him. And you know, the new covenant is, He says, look, I'm going to write my word on your heart. And I'm going to put it in your mind. Then another time He says, I'm going to put it in your heart and write it in your mind. So He's got you coming and going, you know. If you keep the covenant with Him, He'll put His word in your heart. And out of the abundance of heart, the mouth speaks. Like if you got a lot of cursing and misery, well, you're going to speak it. You're going to curse and you're going to speak misery and, and you're going to complain and murmur. You got a lot of the word in, you're going to be preaching faith. You want to be like the Father. He said, any which way he turns, there's no variableness, no shadow of turning. Any which way he turns, he sheds forth light. Well, the very first word he said in the book was, let there be light. So his word's light. So if you're quoting him, you're shedding forth light into the world that people can see it. Now, the darkness hates the light and won't come to the light because then the light, which is the law, the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. And reproofs of instruction is the way of life. And when you get reproved, you're on the way of life. You're getting out of here alive if you listen to reproof. Well, they don't want to come to the law lest their deeds be reproved that they're evil. Who told you your deeds are evil? The law. It's our only rule of thumb. And that's why we have to strive law fully. That's full of the law to get out of here alive. You sure said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Well, the law is like our tutor. It shows us that we can't keep it, so it runs us to Jesus. You've got to have a Savior, don't well, you? Well, you see, the law you said is our tutor. Okay, everybody that's ever been successful in business or anything, say, who was your mentor? Oh, you know, I graduated, and my teacher was so-and-so, and because of him, I'm a success today. When it says you're no longer under tutors, that means you forget everything the tutor taught you? No. Do we make void the law? God forbid. God forbid. Yea, we establish it. You establish the law. Because even Romans says, and Romans, a bunch of sun worshipers, he wrote to them, he said, it's not the hearers of the law that are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be just. He said, so speak ye, now here's a deep New Testament scripture, so speak ye and so do as they that shall be accounted, judged by the law of liberty. If you, I tell people, don't quote the Old Testament if you're not going to do it. Because if you speak it and don't do it, that makes you a hypocrite. And Yeshua, who knows all things, I mean, come on, he knows everything, had one question when he was here on earth. He had one question for the hypocrites. He said, hypocrites, how shall you escape the damnation of hell? I can't figure it out. If you're going to say it, do it. If you're not going to do it, don't quote it. Don't say it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So speaking and so do. We ought to walk even as he did walk. And he walked blameless before his father. He says, I always do those things that are pleasing in his sight. You know, because he followed his... You're supposed to honor your father and your mother. That's one of the commandments. Well, if you don't honor your father whom you have seen, how can you say you honor God whom you haven't seen? He tells you in Isaiah 58 how to honor him. He said, when you call the Sabbath honorable and shalt honor him, not speaking your own words or finding your own pleasure or doing your own ways. He said, then he'll feed you with the heritage of your father Jacob and cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth for the mouth of the Lord of hosts had spoken it. Now this is Isaiah, the last two verses of 58. After he expounds on fasting, he gives you those two verses because that's his holy day. And it separates you from 
everybody else on earth when you keep the Sabbath. Just like he separated the Sabbath from the rest of the week, he separates you from everybody else when you honor it. You're honoring him. You're honoring your father by calling the Sabbath honorable. Amen. Now let's go back a little bit. You were raised in a Catholic background. Right. I, I, was, I, I was born and raised in New Orleans for 21 years, and I went to 12 years of parochial schooling. And I, all my relatives were Catholic. I had 12 years of religious schooling, but I never read the Bible. I just would hear Latin and, and you know, th things that the priest would tell you and everything like that. And they, most of them had red noses from drinking too much because they couldn't get married. And so they were just kind of miserable people, you know. And I went to all boys schools and stuff. I graduated from Jesuit High. But I, we had a lot of heritage and it did, they would tell you well, you're the best. And so it instilled in you something, a desire to be great, a desire to be good, to do, accomplish something. And then you go back to Rome and you look at Rome and say, wow, that is the massive, what used to be the largest church on earth, the St. Peter's Basilica. And they have all these big statues and pillars, gold and silver and everything. And you get a little proud about that, you know what I mean? But then when you get into the Bible, which I did after, when I was 21, you find out, wait a minute, this is the opposite of the religion I learned. This says one thing and it says other. You come to a point where you gotta make a choice. Who's right, man and his religions or God? And I, I chose God, when he, he proved it to me. He proved himself to me beyond any shadow of a doubt. And then after he did that, you know, when you feel all your burdens of sin washed off your soul, then he fills you with the Holy Spirit and begin to praise him just with a groaning's hard to be uttered. You know, it's just flowing out of you. It's beyond your comprehension. And no man understand what you say, how be it in the spirit you speak in mysteries directly to the Father in heaven, Satan can't understand what you're saying. Everybody needs the baptism of the Holy Amen. Ghost. Amen. And it says, if you pray to your Father in secret, he'll reward you openly. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I'm praying to him about it in Amen. the Spirit. You know. And so I'm talking about things before they happen, even though I don't know them, I'm confirming things with him. I have a contract with him. According to the new covenant, he says, I'll write him in your heart, my words. So out of the abundance of heart, the mouth speaks. When you speak, speak as it were, Peter said, the oracles of God. In other words, quote him like you're proud of him. David said, I make my boast of him all the day long. How? By quoting him. He said that, that law is truth. And he said in the Bible book, it is written to me, I rejoice to do thy will for thy law is in my heart. That's the rest of that verse that nobody seems to quote. They just quote the first half. But in the spirit, he's saying, thy law is in my heart. If people didn't have the law, they would go wild. You know, if you don't cultivate vines, if you don't make furrows to channel the water to the roots, if you don't do all this stuff, then they grow wild, they don't produce. But if you channel the water in when the latter rain of the Holy Spirit comes and you, 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 you plow up the ground, dig it up, and just, you know, prune it and everything. You know what Yeshua said? He, you gotta have the patience of a plant. You ever see a plant? Real patient, it's just sitting there like that, right? And then, then you come along and you dig about it and then you cut things off, it hurts, right? And then you pour dung on it. You dung it and everything, it's gonna sit there and take it. But then with patience, it brings forth fruit. Now if it doesn't, it gets cut down and thrown in the fire and plant something there that's gonna produce. See, people don't realize, but the creator of every atom in the universe is a Jew, he wants production. He wants to see some produce coming from what he puts in. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. If he gives you something, he expects you to use it. If you hide it under a bushel or basket, uh, you're going to say, here, he's going to point, point your portion with the hypocrites. And remember the hypocrites? He doesn't know how they're going to escape hell. <laughs> <You> <laughs> We're going to go with some praise and worship. We're going to come back, yeah, and then you're going to share a little more about your testimony. Let's come before his presence with singing. Amen. Amen. We'll be right back after the praise and worship.
Welcome back. If you didn't see the first half of the show, I've been talking to Gilbert Vincent. Man, he's so knowledgeable about Israel and the Word of God and the covenant and the Old Testament covenant. It's so interesting to hear about this and to get a hold of some of these truths. He is deep into this. Spends a lot of time in Israel. Anyway, we're going to pick it up now and find out more about his testimony. All right, we talked about the Bible and the Word of God and the law and all that's important. But right. you went to California, I know, and when you were a young man and you got involved out there with some, what, hippies back then? Well, Jesus freaks. Jesus freaks, and, okay. And we all got excited and we just wanted to be out on the streets in the chief place of concourse and opening the gates in the city, uttering her words like Proverbs says to do. And to get out, see, like if, if you're going to fish, you got to get in a boat, you got to get out, you got to cast a net out, you got to pull it in. The kingdom of heaven is like a net, uh, which when it's brought to the shore, they throw the bad out and keep the good. What do you mean bad? Well, there's certain fish you can't, if it doesn't have fins and scales, it's uneatable. You're not supposed to eat it. It's not kosher. It's not right. clean. It's right. called unclean. It's the same thing. When you're pulled in, at the end, you better be kosher. <laughs> you better be clean <laughs> or you could be thrown out. So here's the thing. The bottom line is, He's the boss. The Lord means the boss. So he's right and everybody else is wrong. That's and a why, in a kingdom, the king has dominion. That's right. He can do whatever he wants. Whatever he wants. He scattereth away all evil with his eyes. So when I went to Israel the first time, I, all I knew was his eye was on that land, it says in the scriptures, from the beginning of the year to the end. So if he's all focused on Israel, I just had a King James Version of the Bible. I said, Lord, guide me with your eye. And boy, he showed me places well, I couldn't believe nobody else saw this. Look at this. Just like the scriptures describe, it's right there. And so I, got, I started to get into archaeology because truth is going to spring out of the earth. And if I can tell you earthly things and you believe that, how are you going to believe if I tell you heavenly things? So let me see if I can get some earthly things to verify the Bible. And almost weekly, if you keep up with the news, they're finding more things in the Bible that prove the Word of God. Like just recently, I think it was a week or so ago, they found two seals, and they're excavating the Palace of David, a little south of the old city, and then Nehemiah's wall, one of the walls, hundreds of years after David, when they came back and rebuilt the temple, they built another wall, and they found two different seals. Now, a seal, a clay seal, a seal is something that somebody would put a clay on a document and press it, and would tell them, they are so-and-so, the son of so-and-so. That's the way they were identified. Well, in Jeremiah chapter 38, there were four ministers of Zedekiah, the last king of Judah, who came to Zedekiah and said, look it, uh, Jeremiah's prophesying that Nebuchadnezzar is going to burn the house of God and if we don't surrender and all this kind of stuff. He's preaching treason. Let's kill him. Will you allow us to kill him? Well, guess what? Two of those four ministers, they just found their seal this month. One in one place, one another. One was Gedaliah, the son of Pasher, and the other one was Jukal, the son of Shelemiah. And guess what? There are two of the four men that asked, and what happened was he gave them permission, go ahead, he's in your hands, and they lowered him into a pit, into a sewage, okay? And he was so stuck in that sewage, this Ebed Melech, who is a black eunuch, Here's this big old black dude that got made a eunuch so he wouldn't mess with any of the king's wives. And he's faithful to the king for life because he can't have kids. So he's going to be faithful to the king. He went to Zedekiah and said, look, it, Jeremiah's going to die in there. He's stuck it. You can't, can't even pull himself out. So the king gave him permission to get 30 men and go and pull him out. He did. He put old rotten clout uh, rags around his arm, on his armpits and had to 30 men had to pull him. That's how bad he was. And he was in the court of the prison until Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the host of Babylon, broke into the city. And everybody, the Zedekiah and all the mighty men, fled by night, by the way of the gate between two walls. And they caught up with him in Jericho. But he freed Jeremiah. The, the, the general of his army freed Jeremiah because he knew this guy was a true prophet. Even though he's in jail, he let him out. And Jeremiah had one month before the month of Ab began, he had one month to get the Ark of the Covenant, the table, everything in the temple, Solomon's temple, get it out and hide it in Golgotha. And I believe that's where he hid it, by the same gate between two walls, by night. They hid the Ark under Golgotha and the earthquake and it cracked the rock open, mm -hmm. the blood went down, it went on the mercy seat. You show that every time you take communion. When you take communion, you take a small cup and to drink all of the cup, like Yeshua said, you got to throw your head up, open your mouth and drink all of it. And it goes down, takes a bunch of turns in your stomach, but then it goes to your heart because wine 
The scripture said, make it glad the heart of God and man. So it goes to your heart, makes you happy. So if we can find these things and prove that the blood of Messiah went on the Ark of the Covenant, well, all, all of Israel's been atoned. Okay, now you got a big family. You got a wife. Now, how many kids do you have living in? At home, 13 at home right now. And you got a new baby. New baby. She's uh, about six weeks old. You're 58. 58, and I'm, my natural force hadn't abated. Caleb, when he was 85, he said, look, I'm just as strong as I was when I was 40 and spied out the land. And now take give that me my mountain. Land. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> so I feel like, you know, the Bible says if you keep, you keep my commandments, there will not be male nor female, barren or unfruitful among you. So, hey, praise the Lord. The very, and he's not double-minded. The very first commandment to man and woman was be fruitful and multiply. Now, either he's double-minded and unstable in all his ways, or he meant every word he said. Well, you're proving it. You got 13 <laughs> kids. <laughs> hey, man. And you know, we get together every night and read the Bible. And that's he, so important to do that. Well, he commands you to. In fact, as, uh, all throughout Proverbs, it says, don't decline from the words of my mouth. Wait daily at my gates. Wait at the post of my doors and eat my bread and live. Daily bread. So we found out that the way he keeps time is by the sun and the moon. So the month doesn't begin when the Roman pagan calendar says it begins. The month begins when you see that first slip of the new moon because he said, let them be for lights and days and years. So at moon disappears for a few nights, there's no light. When you see that light, that's day one. We all read chapter one of Proverbs. Next night, we read two. We can tell you what day of the month it is. <laughs> all my kids, because they read it every day in order. And then, like I said, Proverbs is in the middle of the Bible. In fact, here's one scripture out of the Proverbs. It says, Have not I written unto thee excellent things in counsels and knowledge that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. If you get your verbs in every day, you'll be able to understand the rest of the scriptures because it says, Then shalt thou understand a proverb and the interpretation thereof, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Get your verbs in, and then go to Daniel and Revelation and Ezekiel. You'll start, things will start opening up because you got the, the base yeah. is right here, wisdom. And the, the Holy Spirit's in here to help. Amen. <laughs> and all seven spirits are, it says in Isaiah, the seven spirits of the Lord, all the seven lamps burning before the Lord. So they lighten up the thing yeah. and make you understand and see clearly. What I want you to do is look at your camera and pray for folks. Okay. Well, you know, I'm gonna, I'll pray for people, but here's what they have to do. They have to respond to. You know, it says in the scriptures, both in Kings and Chronicles, you need two witnesses. Solomon said when he was dedicating the temple, he said, if a stranger, that's somebody that they don't think they have any Hebrew roots or, at all. If a stranger hears my great name and prays toward this spot in Jerusalem, hear thou in heaven and grant all that they request. And then fire came down and consumed the sacrifice on the altar. So we know Solomon got, he was right on. He got an answer. You want to get answers? When you pray, he said, say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Would you say, where did he hallow his name? In Jerusalem, on Temple Mount. He built a temple to his, a house for his name. And it's for his namesake. He says, you won't even see me until you say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of Yahweh. So it's very important Pray, every, I would that men would pray everywhere, always, without wrath or doubting, anywhere. But when you get a chance, pray to Gerard, Jerusalem because it works. We're way out west. We're past the Great Sea, the Mediterranean Sea. We're far away. But if we face east toward the temple, he says he hears. It works. Look at all the prophets. They all did that, all throughout. Jonah was in the belly of a whale at the bottom of the ocean. And he prayed out of the belly of hell. He had weeds wrapped around his head. He said, yet, will I look toward thy holy temple? The fish turned around, started heading back toward the temple and puked <laughs> him up. And that's the only sign Yeshua said, you're going to be shown of resurrection. If you're part of the fish, you'll stay in it. If you're not of the fish, that stomach's going to puke you out. Well, we're in the world, but we're not of it. And one of these days, everybody who's not of it at that trumpet blast is going to be puked out. And that's the only sign of resurrection. So it's important for you to pray. So if you hear me now, and if you're in Texas or anywhere in the United States, if you just basically look east, that's why he put his name. He said, my father's house is a house of prayer. So look to his father's house and you say, oh, well, it's not there now. It wasn't there when Daniel prayed to it either, but Gabriel came to him three times and said, three different times, old man, 
greatly beloved. I'm Gabriel. I stand in his presence. I don't sit. I do his bidding. He told me to come tell you you're loved. Okay? So you want to be loved? Pray toward Jerusalem and, and pray according to his will. Find out what the will of the Lord is and pray it. Right now, I pray for people out there that are looking at this show that they will see that the Bible will come to life if they believe that it's real. That the things that he spoke of thousands of years ago, there's still proof that they really happened. They really exist. And everything is cyclical in the Bible, not a straight line like Western thinking, a timeline. It's cyclical. With that which hath been is that which shall be, Father. And there's no new thing under the sun, so we can trust you. If you did it again, you're going to do it again and again and again. So we're going to follow your example and watch. And we're going to pray that you would draw us into the body of Israel, into the body of Messiah. For all Israel shall be saved. The New Testament, the New Covenant, is with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Grab these people in, answer all their prayers that they ask you of, and show them that you're real, and that you're not a, a man that you should lie, that you will answer their prayers. And you'll move in their lives and give them joy of knowing that the word is true, and that you are coming back for them. But remember, you're not coming back to Texarkana. You're coming back to Jerusalem. Let's be focused on it like you are and be ready when you come like servants waiting for their master's return. Keep us in that spirit, Father, that wrote the word and moved on the waters. Move on us and keep us asking things according to your will. And we know that you will grant us exceedingly above more than we can ask or think. And we give you Father, all the praise, honor, the glory, and the thanks in the name of Yeshua, your Son. For there's salvation, neither is there salvation in any other name than the Hebrew name for salvation, Yeshua. And we give you that, all that praise in His holy name. Amen. And amen. 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 Gilbert, thanks for being on the hey, show, man. It's my man. pleasure, man. Hey, I'm going to put his information up. You may want to contact him, have some more questions. He's so knowledgeable about this. Get in touch with him. I want to encourage you to do that. Also, I want to thank you for watching our show. You can contact me at Tommy at HowToBeatTheOdds.com. You can go to the website, HowToBeatTheOdds.com, or you can email me at Tommy at HowToBeatTheOdds.com. Or there's a number at the end of the show. You can call it. My wife, Latrice, and I would love to pray for you. Thanks again for watching our show. We'll see you next time on How to Beat the Odds.